Okay, thank you very much for your kind introduction. Can you hear me? Uh, yes, we can hear you. Okay, so first of all, I would like to thank the organizers for the possibility to give a talk at this conference. And uh, this is a, a story which was uh, uh, developed in collaboration with several researchers and their names are listed here. And it began uh, about two years ago when we were discussing uh, the paper by, uh, by Hitesh Chanlani on free colorable uh, lattices. Uh, Chanlani with co-authors uh, considered a special point uh, of XXZ model when the exchange anisotropy equals uh, delta equals to minus one half. And this uh, spin one halves were placed on the lattices which were constructed from triangles. And they were able to show that uh, the degeneracy of the ground state at this point can be calculated by mapping the ground state on a free coloring problem. In particular, they calculate uh, the degeneracy of uh, the uh, Kagome uh, XXZ model with such value of uh, uh, anisotropy. And uh, their main message was that this point is very important uh, because in the vicinity of this point, all phases which occur in the whole uh, phase diagram can be detected. There were even more papers uh, on free colorable or four colorable or two colorable lattices uh, during last years. But the point which uh, was uh, very interesting for us uh, was their observation that the degeneracy of ground state grows exponentially uh, with the um, lattice uh, size. And uh, immediately a natural question arises whether this uh, system has any relation to flat band systems, because we know that uh, for isotropic Heisenberg system, we can observe which support uh, dispersionless or flat one magnon band, we can observe such a huge degeneracy in the vicinity of the saturation field. And we immediately consider a simple model, one dimensional free colorable lattice. That is just uh, the sort of chain with this uh, special uh, Hamiltonian with a special value of uh, exchange uh, anisotropy, which equals one over two. And that is a lattice which is constructed of triangle. And uh, we can easily calculate the one magnon spectrum. And we find that the lowest uh, uh, energy branch is really dispersionless. It, it is really flat. And we can also find the explicit expression for flat band states and they are given by the following formula and as a matter of fact they are localized on a v shape part of the sort of lattice they can be shown on an auxiliary lattice where only the traps for localized magnets are shown as simply a, a brown circle and our idea was to see what happens in two three and in general, many magnon subspaces. A general wisdom is uh, as follows. You have simply to put this localized uh, magnon state sufficiently far from each other. And that would be the states in a many magnon subspaces. But uh, we were, uh, 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 we, we, but after doing this, we have found that this simple uh, way of thinking uh, doesn't work because we found much more many magnon uh, states, uh, many magnon ground states. And therefore, it is necessary to take slightly a, a different uh, standpoint. Let us consider a single triangle uh, from which uh, all the lattices in, in questions are constructed. So here is the Hamiltonian of a single triangle. And here is the energy levels, uh, the energies and uh, the uh, energy states which corresponds to, to this energy. And you can see that the ground state is sixfold degenerate. And because of the uh, such form of uh, uh, ground states, you can easily construct the free coloring representation for a triangle and therefore a free coloring representation for a lattices, which are constructed of triangle. But we can also take another linear combination uh, of 
these two fold degenerate states in the subspace with as z uh, equals plus one over two and min minus one over two, which are more uh, useful for our purposes. So here are the six ground states of a triangle. They have the energy minus three over eight in the units which were fixed in the previous transparency. And now we can reproduce the calculation for the localized magnum state for the sort of chain lattice. So here is the explicit form for the uh, localized magnum, which is located uh, on the sides two, three, and four. And uh, by, acting, by acting by this Hamiltonian, we immediately realize that the Hamiltonian, which consists of the Hamiltonian of uh, single triangles, uh, will see each, each Hamiltonian of the triangles will see only uh, a states which belong to ground state manifold of the triangle. And therefore the result will be minus three over eight. And therefore this will be again, the eigenstate with the lowest energy uh, of a triangle multiplied by a number of triangles. Uh, I'm interested in a uh, thermodynamically large sort of uh, chain, and it is easier to consider open boundary condition as a first step, and then to uh, pass to the periodic boundary condition. So in the case of the open boundary conditions, there are uh, also uh, localized states uh, which are located on the boundaries. And here are the explicit uh, expression. And uh, here we can check simply by, um, by, by simple calculations that are really the ground state. So we can find the number of states in the subspace with one magnum that is in the subspace where SZ is lower by one from the fully polarized states. And this number is given here. I have some calculations, but I will skip this. So let us pass to the subspace with two magnons. That is to the subspace with as z equals n over two minus two. Of course, two independent localized magnons. Independent means that I, they are uh, placed sufficiently far from each other. Are uh, exact eigenstates of this Hamiltonian in this subspace, and they, they are ground state. But there are more. Uh, ground states in this subspace. Uh, they are so-called two magnon complexes. Here is the explicit expression for the two magnon complex. And here is an explicit expression for another two magnon complex. And they are shown pictorially in this auxiliary lattice. So here we can see uh, two independent localized magnon. They are placed on the sides number two and number five, they are sufficiently far from each other. And here the hot dimmer rules naturally uh, emerges. But there are also such states which uh, are not uh, hot dimmer states. They are pictorially represented here and explicit expression is given here. So again, the trick is uh, related to the property of uh, Hamiltonian, which consists of a sum of triangles. And while acting on such a wave function, uh, each triangle Hamiltonian will see only either eigenstates of a, this Hamiltonian or linear combination of these states. Now we are, can go to the subspace with three localized magnon, and again we find that three independent localized magnon are ground states. In addition, two localized uh, localized magnon and localized two magnon complex uh, is among ground state manifold. And in addition, we have also free magnon complexes. We, there are two types of free magnon complexes. We, we coined them one bracket type free magnon complex with the following uh, explicit expression and two bracket type free magnon complex with the following expression. But probably it can be better. Uh, uh, to, 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 to look at this picture where I, I show se several types of ground states uh, in the subspace with three magnons. Here you can see independent localized magnon. That is a pictorial representation of the state which consists of two magnon, uh, two localized magnons and one independent magnon. And here is the free magnon complex of the first type. And that is a free magnon, free free magnon complexes of the second type. Again, we can calculate the ground state degeneracy and it is given by the following formula. So now we are prepared to obtain thermodynamic properties because we know degeneracies in each 
subspace with various values of SZ. And that is the formula for the generalities, for a ground state degeneracies in these substates. And it may be useful to see what kind of states we have characterized uh, among all two to the power number of side states. Here is uh, the energy levels and the states which we uh, characterize and found that the generalities in the subspaces with different values of SZ are shown here by red uh, by red lines that is a uh, that can be contrasted to the case of uh, isotropic uh, heisenberg chain with special relation between uh, interaction along the line and along the zigzag path in this case the ground state uh, the energy levels uh, in each subspace are shown by red and here are independent localized magnets they become the ground state only in the case of uh, saturation field when uh, we have to subtract from this energy h times sz and h saturation is just equal to the difference between uh, the low energies in the neighboring sub uh, spaces with different sz so uh, of course we can calculate the total degeneracy that is the finding of a free colorable uh, method so we have simply to sum uh, all the generalities and we obtain the following results for the open chain and we obtain the following results for the periodic chain and in both cases in the thermodynamic limit uh, it scales like two to the power of uh, number of sides divided by two of course this results coincide with the uh, outcome of free coloring approach but we have much more we have uh, separated the generalities in different subspaces with different values of z so we can easily go excuse uh, me only two, two more minutes okay so low temperature uh, partition function which is conditioned by a uh, uh, ground state in a small magnetic field and we can elaborate all thermodynamic quantities and we can compare our analytical prediction with the exact generalization full exact generalization and we see that as temperature is sufficiently low uh, we can reproduce uh, magnetization entropy and susceptibility uh, perfectly well. Of course, if temperature decreases, some other states uh, come into game and we have some uh, differences. Okay, we also studied low uh, temperature, uh, low energy excitation. So um, here is the density of states and you can easily see that low energy excitation are separated from high energy excitation by a quasi gap. And that is uh, the reason why uh, we can explain the low temperature behavior of the specific heat at zero magnetic field using only a part of low line excitation. So let me conclude. So we have considered uh, uh, free colorable lattice using uh, another perspective using flat band uh, system theory. And we were able, and probably this is the main uh, message from my uh, talk that we are able to construct more localized states, not only independent localized magnum, but also localized and magnum complexes. And that is to some extent bad news because uh, lattice gas description, which was used in many papers, uh, to some extent uh, loses its powerfulness because now we have to consider uh, hot core objects of different shapes. Okay, probably I'll stop there, thank you. Uh, thank you, Oleg, uh, let us thank. Uh, our speaker. We have time for a uh, few questions. So perhaps let me start. Um, your construction of uh, two and three magnon states reminds me of the coordinate beta ansatz, uh, how, how the construction is made if, if maybe in one the integrable systems. Um, maybe can you comment on this or? or? Unfortunately, I, I have no some rigorous uh, arguments to, to, to relate this construction to, to, to beta ansatz. Uh, Still, we, we have to understand better why why this construction works. We, we can we know how to write down this this uh, uh, wave functions, which are eigenstates. So, but uh, still, at the moment, it is like uh, like some kind of uh, some some kind of art. So I, I do not have a rigorous background for that. Mm -hmm. 
But we can check that, that these states are really eigenstates. And this construction uh, is um, made in such a way that uh, after uh, opening these brackets, doing these brackets, we see only the states which belong to the ground state manifold of each triangle. And therefore, the Hamiltonian, which is a sum of Hamiltonian of each triangle, will give you obviously this minus three over eight times number of triangles. But still, I think that we have to understand better this construction, why, why it works. And probably there is something more deeper under this construction. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Uh, we have a question from Alexei. Yeah, um, I have actually several questions. So one is, um, does this approach work for the uh, Kagome lattice? I think that's the, um, if I remember correctly, that's the original lattice con considered yes, by Chang. We have something for Kagome lattice, but uh, the results are not so impressive. So they are more modest, but uh, this can be applied to two dimensional systems too. Okay, well, um, the next question is basically how generic, I mean, how generic is this approach even with three coloring? So what kind of models, I mean, I think, um, because I saw the Chang Langi paper and also the uh, Owen Benton paper you mentioned in the very beginning. Yes. Um, and they, that seemed to imply that this approach might work actually for, um, probably works for any triangle based lattices. So for example, you go and go to 3D, uh, Yes, yes, yeah, yes. But, they but, even considered four coloring, four colorable lattice that is pyrochlor lattice. But you have uh -huh. to, to to fix a special value of an isotropic parameter. Okay. Uh, then th th this value depends on dimension and uh, number of colors. But uh, the main message uh, of their paper was that in the vicinity of this point, all phases all possible phases already appear. And so their idea was uh, to study a perturbation around this point and to obtain what phases can occur in such system in principle for any values, including the case of isotropic uh, Heisenberg interaction. Oh, oh with the idea that it's instead of, so that they can do a perturbation theory uh, yes, rather than- point. But unfortunately, all their calculations were numerical. So where they were able to calculate analytically the degeneracy of ground state, but uh, the perturbation were done by numerics. And they were okay. even uh, using numerics to separate uh, the um, states with respect to different values of SZ. That is just, I think, the, uh, our advance that we were able to calculate the degeneracies in various subspaces uh, separately. So they can update only total degeneracy uh, analytically. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, well, then I actually have a question related to that. Uh, so the Chang Langi paper considered um, essentially a specific set of parameters. Again, Owen Benton introduced a generalized model. They, they basically shown that you have, there, there are more parameters, you can change parameters and so long as they satisfy some constraint, you yes. always get this degeneracy. So does your do you, does do your result generalize but results generalize? That... To, yes, I think that is a very interesting uh, suggestion. Probably we have to to look uh, on our uh, system from the point of view of this Paler Benton paper. So probably it is possible to find the uh, a, a larger class of models which can be solved by this approach. But I want to say that uh, two co-authors of this paper, uh, Dmitry and Krivnov. They have done something. I guess they have done something probably five years ago, and probably we have to check how their findings uh, can be related to this uh, colorable lattices. Okay, okay. Um, yeah, and perhaps the last question, but this is more of a guess whether you have any comments. Um, what happens if you add disorder into these um, models? Would this coloring uh, procedure survive or it goes away immediately? Okay, I don't know this. This, this also deserves to be studied. Well, yeah, let me then- see the free coloring idea. So 
uh, probably you immediately destroy you emit disorder in the exchange interaction but uh, if they appear coherently so each triangle probably well if, 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 if they i mean let me give a bit of a background uh, so i mean if you if indeed if in these models if you add um, disorder in the interactions like to all interactions the same disorder then this whole thing survive yes uh, I'm perhaps more curious, there were studies of the classic, say if you take a classical Kagoma with just antiferromagnetic interactions and you add disorder, you can show that in this case, uh, you can still work out the ground state, but classically. And I was curious whether it still holds quant in the quantum case and whether this uh, these models could be of any help. Like this coloring problem could be of any help or of any uh, inspiration in that case. Okay, so at, at the moment I do not have an answer, but I think that it's okay. interesting to, to, to look. Okay, thanks. Uh, we have a question or comment by Sergey. Please go. Yeah, just a quick question of, uh, because we are, uh, thanks, Oleg, for this nice talk. Uh, what can you, is your model, your, uh, your, uh, your fine tuned model integrable? Can you comment on that? by whatever we might mean by that? Does it have a macroscopic uh, set of uh, intervals of motion, conserved quantities? I'm not sure whether, okay. Okay, that's that one. That band, yeah. If you have some degeneracy, there's some indication that you have a lot of integral of motion, but- I Well, I mean, you have a many body system, so I mean, in, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that is indication, so, but I cannot follow this uh, in detail. Can you say anything on transport properties in that uh, fine-tuned system? I mean, is there any, uh, what is it? I know that there are some- In current, there. which you can still uh, run through the system? Is there some energy current, you can, heat current, you can, you can let uh, through the system or? At least I know not, no such papers uh, for this specific uh, case with, uh, special sort of chain models, but in principle, this can be also started. Okay. Fair enough, thank you. Okay, with this, uh, we conclude our uh, uh, second session of the first day of our uh, flatband conference. Uh, so let me thank uh, again, all our uh, today's speakers, 